Spokane, do you realize that Washington State is the lowest when it comes to housing units per household? The worst in the country, which means that not a lot of you can afford to buy a house. So bad, in fact, that only 15% of local employees in Spokane County can afford the median priced home. There are some solutions. There's legislation coming down the pipe. If you want a little bit more information, watch our longer video and uh, we'll see you soon. Welcome back, Spokane, to another episode of Everreal Talks. I am your host, Jessica Side, and joining me, as per the usual, is my husband, Matthew as Side. As per the usual, welcome, Jessica, to 2022. Gee, thank you so much. Like, we so, haven't seen each other for the last few weeks. Actually, okay, so there is a new thing that if people don't notice, I will be really surprised, but Matt cut his hair. You know what the, my favorite part of 2022 is? You're, All the things that can rhyme with it. A new you in 2022. We got we're things about, to do oh my in gosh, 2022. Stop. So my new hair do new, in 2022. Okay. I thought he was trying to avoid the subject. No, I'm just saying. It's my, it's my new, new do, do in 2022. Right? It's just a constant... It's almost as good as all the numbers that repeat Here's themselves. Here's the deal. There's just a lot of joy over here at our house about the whole thing. So, I mean, we love You know, it was the right it was the right time and uh, I guess my long hair will live in infamy as long as YouTube exists. Definitely infamy. <laughs> all right. So, one of the things that we want to talk about, <coughs> so we haven't done a show in a while and we want to look back at 2021 at the market the changes that were made, we do month over month a lot of times, but we want to talk about yeah, we're going to talk about the year, year over year, um, because we think it's important that we understand what happened in 2021, and I'm sure we'll talk about some things for 2022 as well. Oh, absolutely! I think history obviously is a projection into the future, and so yeah, you know, we'll talk about 2021. Um, we'll talk about some good things and some challenges. Yep. And what 2022 looks like. And so I, I might pull the old crystal ball out before we're done. And <sighs> You know, I, I watch a few, you know, all of us have our little hobbies that we do. And I have a hobby. And one of the things they do every year is that they actually make predictions about the industry. And, you know, so we could. They make prediction about the industry. What industry is that? And what kind of predictions are coming out? And how <laughs> impacting Listen, is it? Listen, he's making fun of me because I didn't want to. I wasn't going to say. Listen, I love board games, and there's a whole subculture out there for board games and the What industry. is the prediction for 2022 in the board game industry? Like, what are we seeing? That Asmodee the- will not buy any other um, smaller companies. They have cannibalized the whole thing. We are not going to talk wow. about this right okay. now. It's ridiculous. No, but we're coming back to that in a future episode. <laughs> board gaming industry, and what does it look like No, we are not going to do that. I'm not going to bore you with that. All right, Matt, let's go. <laughs> Let's did, let's talk about. Did you have a featured house that you wanted to talk about? Oh, you know what? Actually, I do have a featured home. Uh, it is. Eight, I thought maybe you did. Yeah, <laughs> it's eighteen oh seven East Boone. Um, it's listed for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. It is a three bedroom, one bath, and here's the thing: it has been newly renovated and it looks fantastic. Fantastic. So um, you know, really affordable, good looking house. Check it out. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions about that, 509-62 house, you can give us a call or you can reach out to us on Facebook and the Instagram and all of those wonderful. It probably won't last very long, so yeah. I would jump on it if it's something that's in your price range or even if this is just getting you to think about your price range, make the phone call. We can connect you with some lenders to help you figure out what your purchasing power is. And yep. so then the next time an opportunity like this presents itself, you'll be ready. All right. All right, Matt. Let's... Let's do your thing now. Let's talk about the market. Okay. It's my favorite things to do, the numbers. So uh, That's why keep, I me on ta- you. keep me That's why on I'm task, baby. Keep me on task. I don't want to get off in the weeds too far, okay. but we might not be on the green the whole time. Oh, my God. Sorry. Just get going. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's talk. Spokane Real Estate Market 2021. Um, so this is kind of our review piece. Uh, values January 2021 numbers and these charts we'll, we'll have these charts available on our website uh, January 2021 median sale price was three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars that's exactly one year ago exactly one year ago okay. uh, 
Our December 2021 median sales price, $390,000. Wow. Um, the reality is, is that all of that was gained in the first seven months of the year. We had $395,000 was the median sale price in July. And then we basically flattened out with actually a little bit of a dip. dip. And then it popped back up in December. So, um, and part of it too, the next chart that I want to look at real quick is active listings. And we ran in 2021, our active listings were running well below 2020's numbers. And again, you can see it in the price until July, they started to go up. And actually between August and September, our active inventory listings mm -hmm. uh, on the MLS crossed over and went above 2020's numbers. Mm. And right in that section, if you and then out, then they started coming back down. And by mm -hmm. the time we got to December, they're within 10, six, seven, eight, yeah, 10 listings, active listings wow. in December. And so I put on my, I like kind of drew a little thing on my chart here that that period of time where we saw a little bit of a dip in values and a flattening of values really coincided with the fact that inventory went up, went up during mm -hmm. those those couple of months. And we talk about it over and over and over again. Yeah. It's not rocket science, it's supply and demand. And when you've got more supply, it balances out the demand and then it, you know, values can kind of even out. So mm, um, so that's kind of our values and active properties. What I did for sold units, there are graphs out there, but the sold graphs are just honestly so darn close to each other that I thought it would be easier for me to actually go out into the MLS and mm -hmm. pull some raw data. And the only thing I searched by were sold properties in Spokane County. Those okay. are my only two criteria. So this is everything from lakefront property to uh, manufactured homes on leased land, like okay. housing units. Okay. So in... Uh, Let's actually go backwards. Let's go back in time. Let's start in 2019 and okay. work our way back to okay. current. And you have to remember this is the entire year snapshot, right? So what we usually look at is what this month was and then this month and then this month and kind of the up and down. What I took was the entire 12 month window. So when mm -hmm. I talk about median prices, it's like the median for all of the homes that sold in that year. Yeah. So it's more of a big chunk versus individual up and downs. Okay, so in 20 19, we had 9,224 units sold. Okay. okay. 9, um, the median sold price for that year was 265,000. <laughs> I mean, you can already see what's going on here. Yeah. This is crazy. Median days on market, 19. Okay. The average days on market were 32. Okay. So we, for, for our listeners and viewers out there, Median like gets rid of the extremes and we tend to like that because then it doesn't have like a super, super expensive house or a that, really, really right. cheap and then house. Then pulls it up so your pulls averages it tend to be uh, more volatile yeah. and the median tends to be a little bit less volatile, I guess. Yep. Um, all right. So those are our numbers in 2019. In 2020, we sold 9,445 units. So like only 200 more. Yeah. But okay. more. Yep. I think that's interesting as we talk about, everybody keeps talking about, there's no inventory, there's no inventory, there's no inventory. Sure, there we was... actually sold more from 2019 to 2020. Not a lot, but right. we still sold more. Interesting. Uh, median sold price went from 265 the year before to 305 okay. in 2020. Okay. Uh, median days on market dropped from 20, or sorry, from 19 down to six. Yeah. So big change. All right, let's talk about 2021. Sold units in 2021, 9,560. More even still. Wow. Like 120 or whatever means, that is. Okay, sorry. I will talk about what it means later. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, median sold price, again, for the whole year, 377,500. So in a matter of two years, we have gone up over $100,000 in median sold price. From 19 to and 21. the reason that these numbers don't match is because our num because we added everything. well they don't match some of the other numbers is that what you're saying right. yeah that's and that's what I was trying to explain at the beginning right. is that this is the entire year together so all nine thousand homes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year what without, was the median without sold price dropping off and not making it single family because a lot of the stuff that we look at is more yeah oh yeah family. when we when I run yeah. my my more weekly or monthly numbers, yeah. I'm doing single family, less than an acre type stuff. Okay, so but, interpretation... But I thought it would be good to look at the entire market. So I'm sure you have some thoughts on this, but my interpretation of that is that there are just... It's not just that we don't have enough inventory, although that is true, 
but it's not because inventory has gone down. What it's happening is more people are buying. Yes. So the inventory hasn't increased mm -hmm. with the number of buyers in the market. And so we're going to talk about that in, in just a minute. What I want to talk about now is the impact. Okay. So what is the impact by having our prices go up so significantly? Right. Uh, first of all, if you own real estate, you have seen unprecedented increases in value for Spokane County, for the Spokane area. It's actually, di that is, dis that's disinformation because when we Ooh. went back, when we went back through like all the way, like 70s, 80s, 90s, there were definitely some, Individual years. There were years. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that th this is not the most that our market <coughs> has seen, even in the, you know. Okay. Well, I would argue with, and I think that, that this will be a takeaway for us. Mm-hmm. Those numbers that we were looking at are percentages. Yes. When you look at a 20% increase, when you start at $300,000, yes, that is way more okay. money well, than a 20% increase when you're down at $100,000. Oh my gosh. Of course it's more money. If you, but, but the whole, everything has increased. The price of bread has increased. So uh, relatively speaking, a percentage is a good way to look at something. I don't disagree with that. Thank you. But I am saying that the home values themselves dollar for dollar have increased more than in the past. This, right. is, this is not a good argument in my personal opinion. Uh, I think that percentages helps you understand what it is compared to other things around it. Yeah, we, but we're not comparing it to other things. Like we're not looking at inflation in general compared to inflation we're just saying increase in value i think you're i think you're wrong and the reason i think <laughs> you, i think people out there will agree with me that if there was a year where we saw you know would you would you agree with the fact that people's net worth has probably increased more significantly in the last 2 years than the many several years before that more significantly based on a percentage or based on actual dollars. Actual it's like dollars. saying that's like saying a hundred years ago we're making more money than people a oh. hundred years ago. Well, yeah, we're making more money because inflation, because that's the way that's the way the world works. Okay. So, all right, we're gonna take this offline and come back online so I can prove that I'm right. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. So don't look forward to that episode. All right, it ain't I happening. think we can agree on the next point that I okay. have here. All right, home ownership has become harder and harder for buyers. In Spokane, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So other things about this, other impact items. So uh, Wait, I have to say one last thing. I agree with him that it is, we have seen incredibly significant, but I'm just saying to say it's unprecedented all right. is It's incorrect. one of those words that gets thrown around. It does, days. and I just want to be correct in that when we went back this year and looked at several decades, we were like, wow, actually, we've seen other years that have increased more. That's all I want to say. Well, okay. But okay. 2021 wasn't in that equation. I Everything promise was you prior. it was more. Anyway. We're, all right. Will, can we table this for a we moment? We sure can. We sure can. I'm done. We're going to hit stop here and we're <laughs> going to go duke it out. No, it's not going to happen. All right. So let's... So home ownership is becoming harder and harder, specifically for buyers, right? It's more difficult for buyers to get into the market for a first time or mm -hmm. even move up different things. I want to talk about the cascading effect of this because okay. I think uh, from a broad perspective, it, it's a bigger problem than I think sometimes we take the time to think about because mm -hmm. we think about our one situation. Oh, well, it's I'm going to just stay in my house because I can't really afford to go buy the bigger house or I can't find a, a house that I want to retire in. So we're just going to stay for now. Right. So what happens is, is if current owners that want to downsize okay. can't find a property or they're worried they can't find a property, then mm -hmm. they don't sell. Right. Now that means that move up buyers can't find a bigger house to move into because mm -hmm. those people haven't moved down to something smaller. Right. Which means that first time buyers are having a harder time finding a first time home because those, those would be move up buyers right. are also not moving, mm. which means that first time buyers are staying in their rentals longer Yep. because they can't find a, a first time house to buy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, rental vacancies squash down. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when rentals have no vacancies, ultimately, we're finding ourselves with a higher level of homelessness. Mm -hmm. And I think that you bring it all the way down to that level, mm -hmm. like as more and more, because the reality is, is we're selling more homes, not a lot more, but we're selling more homes. Right. But the migration into this area, the people moving into this area is surpassing that number. Yes. Um, and affordability. And people moving out of their homes, right? People, I mean, I mean, it's 
we know that it's people from moving from out, kids moving out of their parents' home, and then, like you said, people from rentals that now want to buy a house, right? All of right. Those so factors. all of that stuff okay. is not happening. So obviously, I think we can we can agree also that affordability is de- decreasing at a significant mm. rate. So, yeah. and I might even, and in my notes, I said maybe even at an alarming rate. Yeah, that the affordability is decreasing, and I've got numbers if you want to hear them. No, that's okay. I well, yeah. Well, if I'm going to share oh. them with you. With, <laughs> no, I guess whether no, you want to hear them or to not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Anyway, that was the show for today. <laughs> no, I I just was going to say one thing, and that is that the the difficulty is when you hear all of this, you realize that the people, and it's tough that have more money, right? They are able to. Mm-hmm. We don't have time, <laughs> but have to put a pin in it. Yeah. As I was going through, I had several incredible reports that have come out toward the end of last year from mm-hmm. Washington Realtors. University of Washington published some stuff. Spokane Association of Realtors mm. spent tons of money to have a third party do some, like, how do we solve the problem in Spokane? There was a slide that the title of was Reverse Redlining. And they called it the Amazon effect, specifically in the mm. Seattle King County area, where it, it, you know, redlining in the past had been, we're not going to lend to you in these core areas or mm-hmm. these specific areas. And the reality now is the reverse redlining or the Amazon effect is you can't live in these areas unless you make a crap ton of money. Mm-hmm. And so, it, I mean, it, and you look at what is the. <laughs> I mean, it goes into racial equity. It goes into, I mean, so there's a whole, there's a whole bunch there that we can't unpackage and we should, but today we should just kind of keep that in a box and bring that out at another time. We will set it aside and we will talk about it Because it is, it is a a whole, it's incredible because the, the wealth gap continues to grow Mm -hmm. and which speaks to the accuracy of my first statement. Oh, please. Okay. Let's talk about affordability issues. Uh, and again, these some some numbers I think that will help yeah. us quantify this. So this is what's called a price to income ratio, um, which is equal to the median household income. Okay. And and the report broke it up by county. So median household income divided by the median home value. Okay. Okay. So the national uh, price to income ratio is four point four. Just okay. to kind of give us a. We kind of did something on this. A yeah, while and back. we've used okay. like. Home builder reports, and, and again, this is just coming from a centralized okay. report um, and study. So national PTI equals 4.4. So, and I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts throughout the, the state. So the I-5 corridor, so between Seattle and Vancouver over okay. there, is at 6. Okay. Um, so higher than the average. So significantly high, Well, a reasonable amount higher than the average. Okay, which and for means... For 4.4, it means that the median household income is... Lower in comparison to the median household price, okay. right? Because you're it. dividing those two to get that okay. number. Um, Spokane is at 6.7. What? We're higher than Seattle? No, we're higher than the I-5 corridor. Seattle itself. So the I-5 corridor, to clarify, is between Seattle and Vancouver. Okay, right? so, so south of Seattle. South of Seattle. Okay. Uh, Seattle itself is 7.9. Oh, okay. All right. I was like, what? This one's going to blow your mind. Okay. Chelan County. Uh-huh. Eight. Oh. And here's the thing. The, the the median price isn't higher in Chelan County, but your median household income is lower. Right. So uh, average median income. So I, I pulled a few of these just to help you like put it together, right? Okay. So in Spokane County, average median income for this report allows for a purchase price based on a 5% down payment, mm-hmm. allows for a purchase price of $330,000, like $192, or something like that. Okay. 330 Got it. So if, if I make the median household income, I can afford to buy at three hundred and thirty thousand. There, we just told you that the median household in, or sorry, the median price in Spokane County in December was three ninety. Right. Which means you can't if you make that you can't afford. You're like sixty thousand dollars off. Okay. Um, King County, the median income would allow you to purchase at five hundred and eleven thousand. Their median price is eight hundred and five thousand. Ho, ho, ho. That's a crap ton <laughs> That's off. so much money. My brother, Shul- my brother lives in, in uh, Seattle. I'm like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's an issue for sure. Uh, Chelan County, uh, 316000 is what your median income would allow you to purchase, and there's, their median price is 472 mm-hmm. So, So that's 
the affordability gap just continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And this is specific to Spokane County in the report we did at the association in December of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, In 2016, which was only five years ago, 70% of local employees could afford the median priced home. Okay, wait, where was that? In 2016 in Spokane. In Spokane. This is just Spokane numbers. Okay, okay. In 2016, 70% of local employees in Spokane County could afford the median priced home. Okay. In 2021, only about 15%. Oh my can goodness. afford the median priced home. This is a problem. This is a serious problem. When you especially, you know, I mean, you know how you know it's a problem because you work in the industry and you like you're on, you know, boots on the what is that called? Ground? Boots on the ground. <laughs> I'm like on the street. Boots on the moon. On the sidewalk. Um, boots on the stairs. Anyway, <laughs> boots on the ground, you know it's a problem because you're there with buyers trying to get houses and it's like, <clears throat> you just feel like you're in molasses, right? Yeah, you just it, cannot. And this is but helpful, is, right? Because it's quantification of it. Yes. When you go from 70% to 15% in a five-year window, that's, that's problematic. That is, yeah. Yes. Problematic. So, so why do we have this problem? That is the question that I want to help answer. Mm-hmm. And then I want to circle back around to some potential solutions. Okay. Because this is this is our New Year's episode. Like, it can't all be, like, doom and gloom. Doom and gloom. Okay, so you're going to give us some... some but let's something. talk... we got to talk about and the problem. And we're not saving this for next week. We're doing it right now. Let's just do it right now. Okay. I mean, if this is too long a video, you can pause it and push play next week. <laughs> and push play to. next week. Perfect. Um, all right, so... Why do we have the problem? Uh, well, inventory, right? Yes. Inventory is the issue. So between 2010 and 2020, new housing units built per new households formed. Okay, so this is how this is the equation. So new housing units built mm-hmm. versus new households formed. So people coming in or right. people moving out of their home to right, form right, a household. Right. Whatever that looks like. Okay. In uh, Spokane County mm-hmm. was 0.74. So, for every new household formed, you had a three quarters of a house built. Oh, okay, okay. So, if you kind of to put the math together, for every four households that were formed, only three houses were built. So, one person didn't have a house. Oh, huh, okay. So there, that that is the the problem is the new, the challenge is the new households moving into the area, moving out of parents homes whatever that is right there are more households being formed than houses being built over the last 10 years like Mm. over a decade yeah you look at the state there was a quarter of a million homes underbuilt for the number of people that moved into right into the area part of that is because the builders took a serious bath when Mm. i mean think about it i mean i mean i'm sure some of it was i'm just saying in 07 the people who were builders a lot of them went bankrupt in in the state of washington let me give you some perspective okay because the state of washington is 50 out of 50 states for for number of housing units to households like we are the worst so Sure, that was part of it, but that happened across the country, not just in the state of Washington or the county of Spokane. No, it just seemed like a lot of them to recover. And then, like, even, like, I think about Eagle Ridge as just a, a, you know, they were building and building and building and building. And then all of a sudden, the market goes, and they are like, whoa, we're pulling back the reins because we got to make sure that we don't. I don't disagree with that. And it took a while before they started building again. I don't disagree with that, but 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 it's not just that. It's. The millennial generation, Mm -hmm. they are coming of age now to where they're starting families. And I I wish I had this stat more accurate, but I believe the millennial generation, as far as population... um, Oh, they have. What I'm telling you is that they are comparable to the baby boomer generation as far as population. They've actually outpaced them at at this point. I I, I didn't know that number. I didn't want to quote it. It happened like last year or the year before. They are now a larger generation than the boomers. So therein lies part of your issue. And that's, I mean, that's probably the biggest... And the boomers just keep living longer and longer. That's the biggest challenge (laughs) with, with, (laughs) with households. Um, is that you've, again, you've got more households forming than gotcha. houses okay. being built. All right. Um, so we, we already mentioned that Washington is the worst nationally. Um, so this is just kind of more of an inventory thing. Okay. It, nationally, uh, there are 1.14 homes to households 
Okay. So there's all there's always more than one because you've got second or vacation homes. You have some vacant houses usually. Okay. So number of households. So one point one four is the national number. So we have more more homes to house to people nationally. to households nationally. However. No. Most people can't live in somebody's second home, right? So you have right. to think about it in that respect. Right. Like there should be a number there right. that's bigger. Uh, King County, his number is 1.05, so reasonably lower than the national average of 1.14. And Spokane County is even has even fewer than Seattle at 1.03. So we're almost at a one-to-one, and I guarantee there are people in Spokane with a second home. Right. So... And or there are second homes in Spokane where people are living somewhere else and coming here. Right. So just reinforces the challenge with our housing inventory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the solution. Okay. I think it's critical. My personal opinion, and I I, I know a lot of people that will share this, is it's not just about sprawl. Because that is not going to solve the long-term problem. Sure, we could just throw up a bunch of crap houses way far away from the core, but now all of a sudden quality of life goes down because people are sitting in their car for a long, long time. Um, well, and just, environmentally, I mean, we've got more people ah. in cars. We've got more roads that, that have... Well, and then what do you do? When you, you know, when you put up a house, you now you've affected your, you know, the, the forest and you've affected the animals that live in the forest. There's all kinds of stuff, right? I mean, part of the reason why we live here is because there's nature <laughs> well and the other challenge when you look about like, look at like wildfires and death and destruction that come from that a huge portion of that is the the wild land interface right mm-hmm. like building into the the wild lands yeah. and up kind of urban forestry if you will and so that isn't necessarily the answer either because it's causing more issue in that regard as well yeah so housing inventory has to increase bottom line like that has to happen if yeah. we're going to solve this problem um, and I believe it needs to increase through density and building up, not out. Okay. And so uh, the, the reality is, is that state and local governments need to respond with incentives that encourage builders to add specifically missing middle, but any kind of housing, if you think about it, because right. it's that cascading effect. Like if we have only low income housing, like that doesn't solve all the problem. That solves some of the problem, mm-hmm. but it doesn't allow for other the whole cascade piece. Right. So missing middle is where I think there's a huge opportunity because mm-hmm. it allows for the, a, a greater level of, uh, you know, people moving down, like mm-hmm. p- seniors that want to um, downsize middle right. housing fits them. Mm-hmm. You know, first time home buyers, those type of things. Mm. Um, so there are two bills right now that are currently at the state legislature. Okay. They were, requested by governor Inslee. So mm-hmm. this is obviously a big enough issue in our state that the governor said I need the legislature to solve this problem with some with some some bills to make some changes. And I'll just throw out the the current numbers of them. Uh, House Bill 1782 and Senate Bill 5670 mm-hmm. and they're basically addressing Washington's housing crisis through the increase of middle housing. And I'm just going to read a few things off of here as to how it helps with increased housing options statewide Um, basically more middle housing will make it easier for seniors to age in place Mm -hmm. give workers a chance to live in the communities that they serve cut carbon emissions by encouraging efficient development and transportation and help dismantle local land use and zoning laws rooted in inequality and racism Mm -hmm. i mean this is obviously talking points from the the request to make this happen Um, so what is missing or what is middle housing even? Mm-hmm. So middle, middle housing is kind of an umbrella term that is described, sorry, to describe the housing types and needs for all of those different groups that I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Examples of mis, uh, middle housing would be duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, sixplexes, stacked flats, uh, townhouses, and courtyard apartments. And those stacked are- Stacked flats. Stacked flats. So stacked flats, if, if you picture, so some of those stuff that's going in at Kendall Yards right now would be considered a stacked flat. So it's kind of like almost- Almost like apartments, but more of like flats. Like instead of having a whole bunch of apartments next to each other, they're kind of on top of each other, and then mm. they're next to each other that way. Mm. So you, if you look, if you Google stacked flats, you'll see images that have like rooftop gardens on them and mm. lots of balconies, and so they're more of like communities. Okay. Um. So sure, um, because we want the quality of life to still be at a high level. 
even though these are smaller and more densely populated places. Okay. So the cool thing with this is that the legislation is going to prevent cities from blocking middle housing in certain areas. And so what happens is you get you get like municipalities and, and cities that kind of get in their own way on some of this respect. Mm -hmm. And um, the state legislation for assuming this all goes through and my encouragement to listeners and viewers would be that you actually send an email to your state legislature over the over in Olympia and say, hey, we think you should support this. Uh, and it seems to be getting a lot of traction. Honestly, I was on a, a legislative steering call just yesterday mm -hmm. and it was kind of hilarious because uh, the Sierra Club had the same talking points as the Realtors Association on this legislation. Oh, basically, I, is basically, that an unusual thing? To totally, because, okay. because buildings aren't always considered environmentally friendly. Right. And so... Um, but the Sierra Club sees this as a solution to environmental sprawl, issues as well, because of right? The sprawl and all of that. So creating more density and things like that. And so um, for so many different organizations to get behind this, I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of potential for this to, to mm -hmm. pass. So for cities that have a population over 20,000 uh, people um, whose local transit services meet a certain threshold, and you could dig into the details of that, um, under the legislation, local zoning laws would be required to allow middle housing, which we just told you what that is, mm -hmm. um, within one half mile of a major transit stop in those cities. And uh, for areas outside of that half mile would be required to have fourplexes, triplexes, and duplexes that could be built in most other lots throughout the city. And um, so I looked up what a major transit stop is. And um, it cover you know it's the things you would think about you know like high you know, tramways or whatever uh, rail railways, um, but it includes uh, stops on bus rapid transit routes and routes that run on high occupancy vehicle lanes, which is mo more of your west side type stuff. But it also includes stops for a bus or other transit mode providing actual fixed route service at intervals of at least fifteen minutes. Uh, for at least five hours during the peak hours of operation on weekdays. So all of your major bus stops would mm -hmm. be considered a major transit stop. And for a city like Spokane, if this goes through, that could that could revolutionize like the capacity for builders to create density within the city of Spokane mm -hmm. that will ease the issue of housing. Right. And I know that, you know what, I, I think that some people listening to this, it's kind of scary. Like, change is scary, right? And so what does that look like and how is that? I think we can talk more about what that can look like yeah. in the future. Um, there's some really wonderful books out there talking about city I think, planning and, I do and things think it's like in, that. I do think it's important for people to, to not look at this and say, oh my gosh, does that mean there's not going to be any such thing as single family homes anymore right. that's that's silly that's ridiculous yeah because the market itself is going to drive those kind of sure. things and and i think that it's important to realize if things are done well yeah like there is an attractive nature to some of the communities that can be created with this yeah and so um anyway i think that i think that it's i think it's positive yes um, and I, I, I think that there are solutions out there yeah and so bottom line, I have my notes for kind of the bottom I want to say here. one last thing. I was, you kind of interrupted me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just was going to say that I think that you can also, you know, if, if you love Spokane and you, you know, you are raising your family here, like just the idea that your children would be able to afford something when it's time for them to buy a house, I think that's a big incentive for me to continue to want to grow as a city and to, you know, evolve as a city well, so that, so that my flip kids and... You well, know. on the flip side, even my parents, for example, like at some point, yeah, they're not going to be able to take care of an acre and a half in the valley. Like right. it's just not. And so, what does that look like? Yeah. Is there is there an option to be able to still stay in the city they love? Right. Yeah. And not have to pay a million dollars for a right. house. Right. Right. Yeah. That's good. So here's my not so clear crystal ball for 2022 all right. all right even if those bills pass that those are not like no snap and get it done not. right like those are year two mm -hmm. three years out before those legislative changes even like start to see a change in inventory so right. i am anticipating that over the next year 
inventory is going to continue to stay tight. Mm -hmm. I think that um, a lack of affordability and the probability of rate increases will probably um, flatten the growth unless there's more migration that comes in to like offset that. Mm -hmm. But for local movement of buyers, um, I think that the increase in rates and just the fact that things are just so expensive right now will, will probably be similar to what we saw in this um, kind of third quarter of 2021 that we'll see a little bit more of a flatter, we're not going to see 20%, 23% sure. increase next year in, in values. And again, we'll find out uh, if that is true or not. Yeah. We will we will hold him accountable, doggone it. So no, that's good. Those out of towners might push it up. I don't know. Matt, thank you. Appreciate you uh, doing all this research and bringing this to us. You're that welcome. is going to do it for us today, folks. Thank you so much for being here, Spokane. We appreciate you, and we're excited about 2022. If you have any questions about real estate, feel free to give us a call at 509 62 House. You can also reach out to us at info at everreal.com that's e-v-o-r-e-a-l and all the social media that you'd ever want actually not all of the social media we're not on tiktok at this point who knows maybe it could have, maybe this maybe is the it's year new in 2022 this is the year for us to do some dancing <laughs> i think that, that everybody has said no yeah i think that's a wrap thanks <laughs> everybody right, bye everybody bye